Welcome back to the Engineering Workshop. I'm Hunter White. In this episode, we're going to build this extremely versatile flip top car. My problem statement is to design and build a mobile cart that holds a 13 inch bench top planer and a Porter Cable bench top sander. Part of my background research, I found Fisher's flip cart which constrained the rotation of the flip top, which I really liked, providing a stable surface, and it had integrated power for both the tools mounted on the flip top. I also like the flip cart from Guy's Workshop. I like how it had support wings whose height could be adjusted for the tool mounted on top, and I liked how solid the supports were for those wings. My specific design requirements include a flip top mechanism for easy access to both of the tools, casters for mobility around the shop, a durable smooth, level, and flat surface for when this is used as a workbench, can survive multiple shop moves, and has a storage drawer in the bottom for all the related accessories. I also want adjustable support wings for when I'm planing longer boards with the planer. For my prototype, I used Autodesk Fusion 360. I like to run all my 2x4s through the planer just to smooth off those surfaces and then I'll run them through the table saw and mill them down to exactly 3 inches wide. So all these boards come out 1.5 thick, 3 inches wide and that makes all the construction a lot easier later on. I then use this cool little crosscut sled to mill all my half lap joinery with the dado stack. I usually use a half inch or a 3 quarter inch dado stack and then nibble away at the half lap joint until I get it exactly like I want. This makes all the construction a lot easier and everything goes together really square right from the beginning. This is the part of the construction process where milling all our half lap joinery really pays off. I use a little bit of glue in each one of the half lap joints spread evenly and then I'll use screws in lieu of clamps to hold everything in place while the glue dries. I check for square but everything has come out really square using this technique. finish the side assembly, so for the side of this flip top cart, I'm going to use a router bit in my router to cut a half inch rabbit all the way around the edge. So when I cut the router, this plywood will fit perfectly flush like that and then be inset. I can glue and use some nails or something like that. To hold it in place.
this point you might be wondering, this was a whole lot of work to build this frame out of two by fours and half inch plywood when we could have just made it with three quarter inch plywood. And you would be right, this is a whole lot of work. Um, but the original design was to have all the force from the weight of the tools on the top, and then if you use this as a workbench, like hammer blows and stuff like that, to go straight from this top into this frame all the way along the edge. And these edges go straight into the casters, which go into the floor. So this is a very, very durable design um, to take loads from the top, either impact loads or uh, just regular weight. Um, also, this is very durable and all the edges are protected. So unlike normal plywood, which can chip and burn, um, these edges are very strong, so when army movers come um, and move this from station to station, this should survive. Uh, and that's part of the reason why I build in this manner, so that it's the uh, tools when I get there um, will still be nice and look good. protector which just screws back into this 2x4 and then I cut a half inch slot for the power cord. And I added some like hangers or hooks or whatever to wrap the cord around and then I have just some velcro to keep it stowed. So as I'm flipping this around the tools will plug into this and the power comes out the back. Give this a flip and see how it uh, turns out. Alright, well it's, the tools are definitely heavy so that makes it difficult to flip but I can like just awkward uh, but I can tell the mechanism is actually really smooth. Uh, and I like that it stops because you can tell without, I don't have any catches in place right now. Um, but it's, it would, I could use it like this. Um, if I just pushed it a little bit, it'll tip, but I'm going to figure out a way to, to pin that in place. That flips pretty good. Nice. Now that we got the tools mounted, 
the next step is go ahead and make the drawer for the bottom to hold all the accessories. My plan to assemble the wings is I've got these uh, side trim pieces laid out here. I'm going to take tight bond glue and then go into this rabbit that I've cut. And these frame pieces are still loose. I'll then set this three quarter inch plywood down into the trim. And that's going to hold these trim pieces uh, aligned while I'll come through with a nail gun and kind of hold everything together while the glue dries. To cut the slots in these uh, wing support pieces, it'll be oriented like this and then allow the wing to slide up and down. I made a jig uh, for my router, which this width is the exact width of this, and then I have a center line that I've drawn on the edge here, which helps me align my cut path with where the center of the router is going to go. So, I've drilled 3 8 inch holes and I got a 3 8 inch bit. I'm going to drop the router down into that hole and then use this straight edge as a guide to go from this hole to this hole. Let's see how it works. Okay, so to mount the wings on the flip top car, I've got 3 8 inch bolts with 1 inch washers threaded through the back side of this side assembly in those countersunk holes that we uh, drilled earlier. I'm going to take the wing base with the wing and the handles attached and it'll fit onto those holes like so. I'll then add another washer and a nut that will slide onto there and lock that wing in place. So this will allow the wing to adjust up and down with different tools on the flip top cart and then uh, you'll lock this down and then this bottom piece right here will give you adjustment um, so that you can adjust the, uh, the wing height as this goes up this can also go up too. So this is how the wing supports go together. Take your 3 8 inch bolt through your slot and your lower wing support. Thread it and take your 3 16 inch thread around.
Okay, so you then take the wing with this support and these guys go together in that tongue and groove and then this slides up until the wing is level and then gets locked into place. So you have a stable, stable wing. this build for the flip top cart. Really happy with how it came out. Um, we've got a lot of support for really long boards going across the planer, so that was principally what I wanted. The wings are fairly easy to deploy and redeploy. You just take them out of this groove and they fold down. There we go. So they fold out of the way. Um, pretty easy to flip the cart. Just have some pins in the back that are hiding behind the wings. And so I just pull those out just enough. There we go. And so then this rotates pretty easy. And you can see these built in stops here make it really nice. And then I've got corresponding holes on the other side. So. I just put those pins in, and then I have another lock solid top. Uh, rolls really easy, integrated power for both tools coming right off the front, and then uh, obviously ball bearing slides will throw in there. So, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. It'll probably be a while because I'm heading off to another place uh, to go do my full time job. Um, but I'll be back uh, making videos in the shop, so see you then. So some things that I would do differently um, if I were to do this again. I'm not entirely happy with how the wings came out. Um, like the construction of the wing is really nice looking. Um, I really like the way it looks and feels and it's trimmed out. But these door hinges that I used, they introduce a lot of wiggle. So it's not too much at the base, but by the time you get out here, you can see that this part of the wing is moving a lot. So I don't really like that. It kind of defeats the purpose of having all of this under here to make a really solid wing that you can put a lot of force on if, if it just moves back. So it'll still support boards, but I was kind of hoping it would be a little better. Um, also for, for this support, I'm not entirely sold on this design here. It does deploy quickly. I would like to be able to do it with one hand um, as opposed to two. So it's tight and then it just folds up and folds, folds in like that. It, I just need to kind of clean it up a little bit, I think, and yeah, I'm not entirely sure, but anyway, if you guys have any ideas on how you would uh, change that, let me know. Anyways, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.